Hello, everyone, and welcome to the StarCityGames.com Baltimore Open Weekend Quarterfinals. Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan here in the booth. Nick Miller down in the feature match area as these players are just about to begin. David Long on your left, Lucas Cruz on your right. Number one overall seed against number eight overall seed. It's Golgari Depps. It's Eldrazi Post. And David Long going to start things off with a Bajuka Bog, of mm. all things. A little bit surprising there. We'll see a cloud post there from Lucas Cruz. As Lucas Cruz is certainly a big mana deck capable of some pretty ridiculous things. Uh, for David Long, he won't be impressed by that because he can do the most ridiculous thing, which is create a 2020 basically out of nowhere. And much, much faster than Cruz can get his, you know, end bringers and such online. This will be a misty rainforest, though we watched Long earlier in the day, and we watched him do some things a lot quicker than what he's doing right now. Not seeing a Dark Confidant, Mox Diamond, haven't really seen much of anything just yet. As here's another Cloud Post, and this is going to be a Chalice of the Void on one. Chalice is going to be able to stop a card that's very important for David Long in this matchup in crop rotation. Yep, and Long may want to respond here, uh, or just let it go. Now, Long's deck, I, I do believe, has copies of Abrupt Decay hiding out in there. I believe three main deck copies. Four. Excuse four. me. Okay. Full four. So, so Chalice of the Void is not something he's going to be too concerned with. As you see, Long's going to sacrifice the Misty Rainforest and go get himself a Bayou right away. And in a moment here. We're going to see exactly what Long is going to do, and it looks like it probably will be Abrupt Decay to take care of that. So Chalice of the Void is going to bite the dust. Lucas Cruz with two Cloud Posts over there, so access to at least four mana next turn for Cruz. But we'll get there in just a moment as there's a Swamp for David Long. This is a Vampire Hex Mage, and I wonder what he can do with that lone Bayou. Hmm. <laughs> wonder what it could be. And everything, I, I believe the interaction here in Cruz's deck, there's no copies of Dismember, no instant speed interaction, so Long can respond to something like Walking Ballista if he wants to, uh, should Cruz have a way to break up the combo. It'll be a Vesuva here copying Cloud Post, and now we'll see what kind of big mana play Cruz is going to have. But this game could be over in just a moment, folks. It looks like he might be going towards Walking Ballista, as you mentioned. And this is actually going to be a copy of Endbringer, and that actually makes it even easier here for David Long you're, if he's got crop rotation. You're dead. Yep. You are dead. You loose. <laughs> <laughs> crop rotation is going to search up Dark Depths. Vampire X-Mage is going to very kindly remove all the counters from that permanent. And we'll have a 2020 Jerry Thompson Avatar token here in just a moment. And Lucas Cruz knows it. David Long going to win game number one here pretty quickly over Lucas Cruz. Golgari Depths up a game over Aldrazi Post right away here because this is a very difficult matchup here for Aldrazi Post. I hope things do get a little bit better here for Lucas Cruz, and we'll go to the sideboard to see what he can do with four Leyline of the Void, four Thorn of Amethyst, two Ensnaring Bridge, two Ratchet Bomb, a Sorcerer's Spyglass, a Basil's Collar, and a copy of Embercool, the Promised End. Not exactly the most promising blend of cards here. No, I, I not think really. The extra copy of Spyglass is pretty easy to bring in. Um, I respect bringing in the ensnaring bridge and hoping that maybe you can steal a game that way, but uh, the rest of the sideboard I don't think offers a whole lot. Checking out David Long. He doesn't need much to turn things around. He's already got a pretty good matchup, just 60 to 60 or 75 to 75. Three Dreaded Knight, two Surgical Extraction, two Green Sun Zenith, two Duress, and some of those Zenith targets here in Tireless Tracker, Gaddock Teague, Dryad Arbor. He's also got a Liliana the Last Hope, a Caracas, and a copy of Pithing Needle. I would not bring in any of these cards. <laughs> the end. <You're laughs> I would not bring, none, of these, none of these cards are improvements. Same 60? One Same of your 60. favorites? Same 60. Fair enough. Well, we're going to see what David Long likes to do here. We do let you know a couple of results here as these players are humming along. Matthew Vuk able to win game number one here over Michael Plummer. That's four-color loam up a game here over Michael Plummer playing Reanimator. And as you mentioned in your breakdown, it's actually going to get tougher for Plummer after sideboard. No question. Four lay line of the void is a lot to work through. And then Jonathan Rossum, number seven overall seed, up a game here over Will Pulliam. Rossum playing Grixis Control against Will Pulliam, who's playing Agra Loam. Rossum up a game and going to get access to those surgical extractions, among other options in the sideboard. Seems pretty difficult now here for Will. Uh, Brian Durkin, number three overall seed, uh, with Mono Blue Painter against Shaheen Sarani, who is playing Grixis Control. They're still working their way through game number one. If we have time to jump over there, we, of course, will. 
And then David Long currently up a game right in front of you. And I've actually just been told that Shaheen won game number one here over Brian Dirk. And so players are humming along here in our quarterfinals. And we're going to move our attention over to the weekly sale here with StarCityGames.com because you don't have a ton of time to save on some legacy and vintage singles. Yeah, new sale, new categories goes up Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So not a whole lot of time remaining to get up to 20% off select legacy and vintage singles over at go.starcitygames.com slash weekly sale. We'll get ready here for game number two between David Long and Lucas Cruz here in just a moment. These players will continue to sideboard and shuffle up. For David Long, this is going to be top eight here, number 10, it looks like. Our graphic will say nine, if memory serves. But for Long, this will be number 10. And again, most of his work has been gotten done. Actually, it's number, it is number 10. We've got to update that thing for David. Apologies there. But a lot of his work has been gotten done in Legacy, as I mentioned during our analysis. Uh, this is a player who I, I'm trying to think of who makes 2020s better. <laughs> More reliably, yeah. faster. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who does. He, he's been doing this for some time here on the SCD Tour to a lot of success, uh, whether it be lands or turbo depths or maybe this slightly slower version that he's playing here this weekend. Uh, but he dominated this tournament this weekend. And I think as we've made these changes here in Legacy uh, with Grixis Control and Miracles and just maybe a slower format, uh, people forgot about old, uh, old Dark Depths and what it can do. Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, this is shaping up, I think, to be a really good top eight potentially for long and uh, up a game, first overall seed, uh, really in the driver's seat right now in this tournament. I am curious what decks he fears playing against. You know, something like an aggro loan. I mean, what do they do about a 2020? You know, like, I, I'm, I mean, that's a, that is a deck that does have Wasteland. They do have Chalice. They have Night Relic Rail, that stuff. But I think David's kind of demonstrated his deck's got some uh, redundancy to it. I think the Miracles matchup is probably not that good. They have a lot of answers to a Merit Lage. Fair enough. They've got a, they've got Swords of Plowshares Terminus, stuff like that. Maybe a little yeah. counter magic sprinkled in. Yeah. So that's fair. I suspect that's that fair. matchup is you are soft in that matchup, which would explain why a lot of long sideboard is trying to get away from being all in on the combo and instead turning into a duress Green Sun Zena tireless tracker style deck. Gotcha. Well, while these players do shuffle up, we do want to let you guys know where we're at with Bingo. Uh, because uh, we don't have a winner yet. I'm not sure we're going to have one by the end of the day, so we might just go with most uh, most squares or something. Uh, no, I, we roll it over to the next one. We roll it over? Yeah, it's just a draw. You're just making a ruling here? Yes. Actually, you know, I'm fine with draw. Yeah, it's I'm fine with draw. Just call it. Uh, Blind Hip Cabal Therapy is going to be a win for me, along with Krakus returning a legendary creature. Does, oh, is there Krakus in this? In this uh... Yeah. Uh, I. There's one. Yeah, there's okay. one for Lucas Cruz. Okay, I'm live for a W there, so that's that's important. Uh, otherwise, not so much. Uh, for Patrick, you're still live with Jace Ultimate. Is that is that correct? Jace Ultimate gets me there. I think I thought there was one, maybe one other. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide is a creature. Which I think it, is that part of the are, are there Spirit Guides in these Eldrazi Post lists? I know there was one in the previous one. Uh, there was some in Dylan Hands. Uh, deck. Yeah, uh, there are none in this. Probably Jace the Mind Sculptor Ultimate. I like the elements of this. Uh, of this bingo card that looks like they were written for a legacy tournament in 2010, <laughs> such as player gets a card from outside the game with a wish, <laughs> or price progress deals six plus damage. Or Goblin Char Belcher wins a game, because that hasn't happened since 2010. Also true. Yeah. It's a tough card. Again, you're going to have to butter Nick up a little bit mm -hmm. with some noodles and company. Not here, though. No. And not in Indy or anywhere else, apparently. Tough news there. You know what I'm going to do? Bo Matt Kerr gets sacrificed. Nah, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. People, I know people are playing with it. I don't know if that makes it a real thing, but sure. I know that we were talking about stock earlier in the day. I'm thinking about buying noodle stock. Noodle stock? they, they got to be a public company. Fix it up. Yep. Fix it up. I'm going to be buying all, all the noodle stock. Yeah. Super easy. That and I wonder if White Castle can be bought. Can we turn that franchise around? Or are they just kind of What do you mean turn around? <laughs> what do you mean turn around? What? Ooh. Noodles Noodle and Company stock is at 12.50 a share. I made my big I talked about this earlier with you, but I made my big play. Yes, you did. On movie pass. Do you want yeah, to share it with the people? The stock's like a penny a piece right now. Yeah. And all you need is just one like tech moron to come along and be <laughs> like, I'll put a quarter of a billion dollars in this thing. So I might bust out of like, you know, the hundred bucks or whatever, but I like it as a roll of the dice. And that's a, a great roll. So it's a real, you know, it's a real piece of advice. If you have a hundred dollars and you're okay with losing it, just go buy, you know, whatever it is, 10,000 shares of movie pass. It was $60 six months ago. Yeah. And all you, all you need is just one. It's just one idiot. And there's so 
many of them up there. All, all it, you know, the problem with this service is just not disruptive enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, we really focus on disruption, disruption. of energy. Disruption, uh, disruption is such a venture capital I know, word. I know, I know. Yeah, it's such a VC word. Yeah. Boy, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it, it costs nothing. Right. It costs nothing. And everyone likes to make fun of it, but then one guy, you know what? People make fun of it. They're not going to make fun of me after I turn around. Right, yeah, exactly. They're going to laud me as a genius. Yeah. You know who should buy it? Vivek. Vivek, yes. Run a DV. Yeah. There so anyhow, I'm, set, I'm sitting on some shares of Movie Pass. Yep. Might go busto, but I like it as a roll <laughs> of dice because our uh, current like economy and broad society is just not accountable at all. Bad ideas, doesn't matter if you have them. Nope. It's just about deceiving the handful of people who have some money to go along with your idea. And why not Movie Pass? People just, liked it. Yeah, people people used it. People liked it because it was wildly unprofitable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so the foundational <laughs> position of a you know, I maybe I shouldn't say this. I guess I'm kind of a partial owner of Movie Pass. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, that's my that's my spec. Every day I log in and I just make sure it hasn't gone down to zero. Perfect. And every day it hasn't gone down to zero, I consider it a win because all I'm doing is waiting for just one of those people with a you know. With the top three buttons of their shirt unbuttoned. Yeah, but just let's do it. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Movie looking, pass, looking making a move. Looking to disrupt. Yep. <laughs> There's your financial advice from Patrick Sullivan this weekend. Right. Between between how to load up on Aaron Barrage tokens and buying Movie Pass, all of you people yeah. watching should be rich by now. Right. Yeah. It's so I, I give out so much free advice. You actually make money watching the show. That's which right. Is free. Yep. It's free until it isn't. Right. Sorcerer Spyglass. We have our first winner in the quarterfinals. Awesome. Awesome. He wins over Will Pulliam. Two games to zero. Grixis control. Moving on to the semifinals. Here we see a Sorcerer Spyglass. David Long, what you working with? I see myself a Sylvan Library. It's all rolled up already. Yeah. He always, <laughs> he always, everything he rolled always up. just has it. See a Sylvan Library, a Vampire Hex Mage. Let's make it two of those. Dark Depths Wasteland, uh, Abrupt Decay, and Verdant Catacombs. So yeah. comboing is going to be not hard. Yeah, and so we can kill the Spyglass next turn <laughs> and then make it 20-20 the turn after. Yep. This is Cruz's best draw. He cannot hope for better than this. And even a Thought Knots here doesn't break it no, up. No, Because it only takes one of the Hex Mages. No. Okay, then. Of course, it, you know. Uh, yeah, Urborg, Urborg Dark Dex, of course. Why would you not have it all? Yep. Never not have a guy over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that archetype, never not have a guy. That was my favorite, one of my favorite Tim Aitonisms. The inventor of never not have a guy. Yes. <laughs> that and Allie McPeel. Allie McPeel. That's another Tim Aitonism. Tim's got a lot of great ones. Yes, he does. We're going to go back over to David here in just a moment. David will draw. Sometimes I need to remind the cards who shuffles who. Yes. No. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> incredible line. <laughs> I think Tim Aiton would be good at coverage. He would never do it, but I think he'd be good at it. Uh, I don't know if he – I think he's perhaps too self-aware of the absurdity of the whole thing to be able to indulge in such a thing. Mm. But, of course, he'd be great. I think I could bring the best out of him for one round, I think. A whole day, he would he would concede after, like, round five. He just – I'm leaving. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, you'd also have to manage just the, the, the random – the random disconnect. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> like, I could see, like, in round four, at, at, like, during his fourth round, he just wouldn't say anything. Right. I mean, Tim, what do you think? And he'd just give me a dirty look. But that's okay. That is okay. And David is thinking on what land he wants to search up here with Verdant Catacombs. And if he wants to fire off this Abrupt Decay main phase. Uh, I think he I think he just pitched to the Mox Diamond, and now he's going to Wasteland. His oh, draw was me. His draw was Mox Diamond, which is actually the perfect draw. That's true. Because now he can Wasteland one of the two mana lands and still Abrupt Decay and kill next turn. Yeah, that's true. So, so how's this guy in first place again? <laughs> Besides knowing how to play his deck exquisitely, because he's the best at making dark depths on the SCG tour. This is uh, and, and Cruz, Cruz had his draw. I mean, this this is this is a good draw. This is a good draw. Chalice Chal on one stops a, a, a decent amount of David's deck, and Sorcerer Spyglass. Well, that's his, his best piece of interaction. Yep. Uh, you know it's coming now. Mattery Shaper. Yes, sir. 
put some pre- you got you got him on his back foot a little bit. You've rocked him, land some jabs. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to go in for the kill. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite card for your birthday, which is coming up soon. I'm going to send you a bag of coffee, a foil matter shaper, and a foil voice of research. You know, you can just play with Delver of Secrets, which is a three-two. <laughs> And it's one mana, and you don't have to play with a bunch of not very good cards. Okay, so they're going to get a... I imagine we're, this, will this will get a, the response. A li- this will elicit a response. Yes. Abrupt decay that. You know what, I, you know what this is for Lucas Cruz? A bad matchup. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yes. An unfortunate pairing. Yes. He's had a very good tournament. Squeaked into the top eight, 11, three, and one. He got a bad matchup. You know why we're watching it? Because people they made voted. us at home. People voted. Uh, people voted for this. That's right. I respect. I absolutely respect the desire to watch the least competitive match possible. <laughs> Trust me. And if that's what was going on here, then that's fine. That's fine. I don't get that sense from the voting. Dark Depths, 10 Ice Counters from Cold Snap. Powerful. Looks like Matthew Voss may have won his match. Can't tell. There's Vampire Hex Mage. Yeah, he looks like he's idling. Yeah. Chatting it up with Nick Miller. Not a bad person to chat it up with. Long, tell you that much. Still has to be mindful of the Caracas. Yep. There's Eldrazi Temple. Let's see what this is. All right. Snaring Bridge. The snaring Bridge is, is a thing. Until David finds another Abrupt Decay, that is a thing. Let's see if David wants to make the 2020 now or not. It's no real rush. I, mean, I don't think so. Unless you actually have it rolled up, you have a way to get the bridge off the table. Cruz still in it, though. Matthew View going to win his match two games to zero over Michael Plummer for our Grixis Reanimated player. Very nice tournament for Plummer, but his day is done. Agrilo moves on. Going to play the winner of this match. What's, what is this? Silver Library. That'll help find that abrupt decay. Yeah, paying it through, playing it, uh, paying rather, excuse me, through the Thorn of Amethyst. Indeed. We'll go back over to Cruz now. Looks like he's picked up a copy of Eye of Ugin. This, uh, do we want to give you a stamp on this one? Two lands that don't make mana? Mm-hmm. Which ones are you counting here? Dark Depths and Eye of Ugin. Eye of Ugin. a mana proxy. I count Dark Depths. That counts as wow. a... Wow. Wow. Okay. It has to be like the Maze of If. Look at you. What a guy. I'm trying Island to, of Wok Wok. I'm out here trying to give you a free square and you don't want Island it. Island of Wok Wok. Sorrow's Path. Tabernacle. Adventurer's Guild House. You're thinking of all the worst cards right now. Here's a great one of those. Look. All right. A gentleman's agreement. Yeah. Glacial chasm. I don't, yep. What is that? Good against merit lage. Tap to it. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> That's, if if that Cruz could get one of those right now, he would. That's that is definitely true. Gonna make a little uh, make a little twenty twenty here is is David Long. Mazebeth is. Also good against Merit Lage and also good against other things, so you can play that instead. But on a walk walk is the cool way to do it. That's true. Also good against Delver of Secrets. Again, true. See if Long's going to pay a bunch of life. Yes, he will. So the Ensnaring Bridge is what's keeping Lucas Cruz alive right now. And for what it's worth... If David Long takes too long to find an answer, that means we could see Lucas Cruz activate Ayavugan. 
So Long has drawn a, a pithy needle. And okay. so there's a couple of things that that can do. You can go ahead and, and shut down the eye of Ugin. The other option that you have is to uh, use it to shut down the pre preemptively shut down Caracas and then just hope to draw an abrupt decay or some such for the bridge. Shaheen Sarani wins his match two games to zero, by the way, which means our quarterfinals went by real fast. And I don't know how this is the last match, but here we are. I guess the pithy needle can't be played because of the chalice. Oh, sure. Yep. Yeah, I just thought about that. Yep. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have Jonathan Rossman against Shaheen Sarani and a Grixis control mirror coming up here. Who brainstorms harder than Shaheen? I'm sure that Shaheen is just salivating at the prospect of playing a Jace Mirror. Yeah, that's his dream. For money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Against some young upstart who thinks they can control better than Shaheen can. David Long going to pay some more life with the Sylvan Library. Has he found an abrupt decay yet? I think he just did, folks. Yeah, I think he just did. Abrupt decay there. And that's going to do it. David Long going to win this match here against Lucas Cruz. Two games to zero. We got sweeps all through the quarterfinals, folks. It was pretty easy breezy there for David Long.